hello there. I thought maybe I would do something for you bigger kids. You little kids can watch too. You would probably like it. I am going to read you the story of Swiss Family Robinson from an old, old comic book. That's probably worth some money right now, actually, now that I think about it. But it's probably 50 years old, and it was my big brother's comic book when he was about 10, maybe. And um, he died. His name was Larry. He had bone cancer. But people used to give him things when he was so sick, and someone gave him this comic book, and my mother kept it. It's a really good story. And you may have read the story. You may have seen the movie, but... I thought it'd be fun for us to share it because it's such an exciting story. So I'm going to read you parts of it. And today is part one. You ready? Swiss Family Robinson. And before we start, I want to remind you that in the original story of Swiss Family Robinson, the dad was a pastor and they prayed every day. So if you go back and read the original story, you'll find out that even though it's not a true story, that it really was a little different than Walt Disney's, but this is still a good story. The ship carrying the Robinson family, father, mother, and three sons, Fritz, Ernst, and little Francis, to a new home on the island of New Guinea, is tossed and battered by a sudden raging storm that smashes timbers and rigging and traps the five Robinsons in their cabin. Can you imagine a storm like that? Help! Help somebody! Get us out of here! No use calling again, Ernst. Nobody can hear us. The door won't open, won't move an inch, boys. It's jammed and blocked. There's a sudden splintering crash and the ship lurches to one side shudders violently and comes to a creaking, shaking stop. What is it? The mother said. What happened? The ship must have hit some something, probably rocks. The storm finally ends and at dawn, the Robinsons managed to break a hole through the cabin door. Hello? Anybody there? If anyone was on board, they would have heard us by now. The others probably abandoned the ship during the storm and forgot us. The Robinsons clamor through the battered, empty ship to the debris-cluttered deck. The only sounds are the creaking of the timbers. <laughs> the pounding of the waves, and the cries of frightened animals on board in the, down in the hold. Look, land, hooray, an island. It's close enough we can get to it if we build a raft. We'll have to hurry. The ship seems solid on these rocks now, but it may break apart any time. Then we'd better get started. Come on. The Robinsons worked fast and furiously, sawing barrels <clears throat> to make the raft and collecting necessary supplies. We found a compass, a sextant, and plenty of firearms in the captain's cabin. Now, firearms are guns. Look what I found! The captain's dogs, Duke and Turk, and they were sure glad to see me. At last, the raft is built and loaded, and the Robinsons are ready to pull away from the ship. Wait! We forgot the dogs! We can't leave them. We can't leave the animals, Father. They'll die, said Francis. But we can't take them on now. They will sink the raft. We'll try to come back for them. And see, they built a raft out of barrels lashed together so they could carry everybody to shore with big poles. But the dogs leap into the water and swim alongside the wave-tossed raft. Oh, out in the ocean, that was hard to swim in, I bet. 
Please take them on board, Father. They can't swim much farther. They'll upset the raft, said the father. Finally, the father can't the father can watch the dogs separate struggle no longer they won't sink us it's a miracle if they don't let's try to get to shore as fast as we can after a long hard struggle against the sea's churning waves the robinsons stand safely on dry land at last First, we'd better unload the raft and put up a shelter for the night. No, dear. The first thing we need to do is give thanks that we're safe together. And I bet they did in the original story. They probably bowed down and, on the sand and prayed. At sunset, shall we go out to get the animals if the ship's still there tomorrow, Father? Ernst asked. Yes, and we'll bring back everything we may need to survive. We don't know how long we'll have to stay here or what we'll find when we explore this island, if it is an island. That night, when the boys were asleep, the mom and dad talked. I'm sorry now that we ever left Switzerland to make a new life in New Guinea. Don't be sorry. It was the right thing to do, she said. We want our sons to live in a big new country, free from the threat of Napoleon Bonaparte and war. That hasn't changed. You're right, and we'll get there yet, said the father. And that's the end of part one. Next time we'll do part two, where they go back to the ship.